founder of the Brio Life, a record label and creative collective uh, that curates uh, more memorable music experiences through the power of visuals. Very happy to start off the first uh, leg or stage of our Google Plus campaign with our most recent project through the Aperture, where we have three musicians and three visual artists uh, from around the world creating work inspired by each other. So this first stage, the visual artists are here. We're going to do an interview with them, talk about the creative process of them uh, creating their artwork inspired uh, by the musicians that they've been, um, I guess, teamed up with. And I guess the important thing with the project overall is that they're digging much deeper into the music rather than creating this kind of generic atmosphere uh, for, for the song or for the music that they have chosen. Um, and that there's more you know, uh, similarities in the elements and the languages between uh, visual art and sonic art. Um, so really excited to have you guys here. Um, if you guys can introduce yourself um, and who you've been paired up with, your background a little bit, what kind of musicians you've worked with in the past. Um, so yeah, Guillermo? Uh, well, um, my name's Guillermo and I'm from Florida. Uh, the U.S. and um, I was paired up with uh, Taku, and I've been I've worked I've done artwork for uh, Go to Gong, uh, Boy the Beyond. Um, done a few posters for like X Four X X, and um, just done stuff under Relief and Abstract, and that's mainly been what I've been working on musically in the music art world. Cool. Yeah. Sunny. Uh, my name is Sunny. Uh, I live. Uh, in Las Vegas now, although I'm kind of officially based in Los Angeles. Um, I've been doing this for, uh, well, I uh, started out doing design for a record label and um, have worked consequently with a lot of different kinds of bands over the years. Um, um, I was paired with Teen Days for this project, and... Um, no, it goes... Sonny, you there? Yeah. He's free. Can you hear me? Yeah, we're good. Let's keep... Okay. All right, you just froze for a second. No problem. All right. That's all I have to say anyway. Okay, cool. Avi? All right. Um, my name is V, and uh, I'm from Munich, Germany. And is it... Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> I thought I was freezing, too. Mm -hmm. um, okay, I'm paired with um, Sun Glitters. And I've worked with artists like Onra, and most recent, um, I'm Nobody, Taku as well, and um, yeah, and Noise from Sunday Records. Very cool. All right, Avi, I guess the first question I'll direct to you um, is that w when I first reached out to you guys, I asked you to choose three songs from these artists of three different albums to be inspired by um, to kind of create this. I guess inspirational collage into one final product and um, the cool thing with this is that it kind of is a visual representation of a longer duration of their of their music uh, and you guys have only had about a month to do it so you're kind of capturing you know the span of what their music entails and the kind of uh, the way they had progressed into one final visual product. So I guess, Avi, we can start with you with Sun Glitters, uh, the three songs that you chose, and why you chose those three, and maybe, um, you know, what your overall approach to what Sun Glitters was, your, your uh, initial reaction to his music. Okay, so I chose um, Take Me to the Ocean, Tight, and After Eight. Um, I don't know, I, I chose those three songs because it's more melodic, and I like melodic songs. It's, yeah, when I heard these songs, it was like the first, um, yeah, songs to where I thought, yeah, okay, I'm, I'm going to do the artwork for these songs. So, yeah, um, what was, sorry, what was the next Just question? Your, I mean, your, your initial reaction to his music compared to maybe other musicians that you've done work for? Oh yeah, so his music is more like this chilly, wavy, more relaxing songs, and um, yeah, it's it's totally different than the other artists I've worked with because the other, like maybe Onra or Taku, they're more like into hip hop, 
and this is uh, Sengler is totally different. All right. Cool. Uh, how about you, Sonny, with uh, with Teen Days? Three <clears throat> songs. Well, the three tracks I chose were um, Light and Love, um, for Sweet Dave uh, in the future, and for Body and Kenzie. Um, really, how I how I chose the songs was just a matter of um, streaming the, the Bandcamp page with all of his releases while I was working, and just um, kind of paying it, you know, com- making notes of which tracks kind of like caught my ear, caught my attention, sort of pulled me out of my my zone. And um, it was funny because it, it, I kept coming back to the songs that's that's the. I, I kept getting struck by the tracks that seemed like kind of the most sort of hypnotic or repetitive uh, in a sense, and that's actually like the kind of music I listen to the most when I'm working, so it actually makes a lot of sense to me. Um, but uh, they were just um, tracks that I felt like um, were really kind of... Uh, I, I hate to use the word plotting because it sounds negative, but they, but they, to me, they, they sort of like, kind of churn and grind in, in this kind of mechanical way, um, and yet they, uh, it's this really rhythmic, repetitive, almost like percussive, um, sort of uh, just, just zone for me. So those, those three tracks seem to kind of like have this kind of continuum that, that, that sort of caught my, captured my imagination. I guess you could say. Right, and I mean, I I would say that even uh, Teen Days' music is probably a lot different than the stuff you've done before. I know you work closely with, like Omar Rodriguez Lopez and the whole yeah. Sergeant House crew, and that that's much just overall is a harder sound. Yeah, it's a lot more. Yeah, I would call. Yeah, it's a lot more like uh, I don't know, bombastic or or uh, dy- not dynamic necessarily, but a lot more aggressive, uh, generally speaking, and a lot more. Um, I guess visual. I mean, most of the band, you know, I don't do that much instrumental uh, music, um, and so it's it's this was kind of a way um, cleaner slate than I usually start with. So cool, interesting. Guillermo, uh, for Taku, I basically wanted to choose from three different years because he had a lot of releases. Like, he had he has like obviously like really good work ethic, so he was like working for a lot. So it was like a lot to choose from. So I was like. Well, the most different I can get is the year span, so I, t- I chose them, um, Tell Me Twice, uh, Click Clack, and Build. And, yeah, I basically wanted to look for something that didn't have any vocals on them or any, like, lyrics. I didn't want any, like, voices or human anything to, like, influence the work. Because I feel like a lot of things already has, like, samples of lyrics and stuff, like, automatically it brings up, like, what the song is about. Right. It's supposed to be an instrumental thing. It's more open to interpretation. Mm-hmm. So I actively just wanted something that didn't have anything that I could just, like, listen to for, like, a long, long time and just, like, keep on hearing it and not have being influenced by it. Um, and, yeah, it was definitely different from what I usually do because it was more, just more dance, uh, more, like, current EDM influences, just, like, what's going on, like, trap, like, garage, all that stuff. And um, usually I don't, I do more experimental stuff or, like, just more relaxed stuff, not as dancey. So. All right. And... I have to ask you the next question. Um, you know, the really cool thing is I kind of asked you guys a little bit later to to have a title to the poster um, to kind of helps everyone, you know, maybe sum up your ideas conceptually or what have you. Um, and your title was definitely the most interesting, so I need to hear uh, your inspiration behind why you called it what you did. Um, well... When I when I if I guess it first relates to like how I wanted to like make the three songs into three different things, that was like a, 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 um, difficult, and that's where I let get like arrive at the point of well, um, I could take three different X and then make a piece out of that. So I, I, I it's basically a collage of three um uh, uh, people from the Wadabi tribe, which is one of like one of like uh, cultural one of the cultural cultural tribes in the world, and um. Basically, the word stands for like living the way of the ancients in their traditions. Um, they basically always choose to say the same, no matter like modernization can happen. So, on the other hand, you have Taku, which music has like been constantly and constantly changing, like with like you know the different waves of genres coming in and out. Mm-hmm. You know, it keeps the Taku flavor, but it always changes. And on uh, opposition with that. 
where they choose to not ever change. So it's just like a just suspicion of both things. But at the same time, it's like modernized because it's done through like a computer program. Right. That piece. So it's like this kind of like putting things together that will probably never meet together. Right. And it's definitely for, I mean, his music is forward thinking as well, you know, with all the kind of genres that he jumps into. and. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just like constantly, constantly evolving and like always seeing like what's new, what's, what possibilities can we get. You right. know, that's thing. Like, because you, he listened to his earlier stuff. Like, you have like the 50 Days of Dilla, all that. Like, that was like straight. Like, <coughs> now it's like evolved into this like massive EDM collection. Of, yeah. Very cool. Yeah, I, I honestly, when we when we put this project together, Taku kind of seemed like an outlier a little bit with the musicians that we chose and that yeah. we were able to get with this project. Because yeah. Teen Days and, and Sun Glitters have been on remix uh, LPs and, and everything. And, you know, I interviewed Taku probably about seven months ago, and he has a really strong visual appreciation. You know, he has this record label, Sunday Records. He... Shows appreciation for the visual art is actually the most recent project, the songs to break up to. Um, he did this really cool visual project where he had different people kind of interpret yeah, these songs yeah. and, and do different kind of art installations. So it's it's cool to have him kind of out there to be the outlier, doing different kind of music, being associated with different musicians, and showing that he can tie in to this really visually um, stimulating music, which is great. Um, but yes. So I can kind of combine the title question and the, the question that Guillermo kind of already covered with how did you go about taking these three separate ideas and these three separate inspirations into a final product. Um, so I guess, Sonny, I'll, I'll ask you that question next. I'm not sure if you necessarily – I saw that you had titled the poster Fabric of Time. I'm not sure if that was an official title. I just saw you had posted that. Um, but was there any inspiration with that title – and the connection between Teen Days' music and the, the artwork that you made? Uh, <clears throat> the title was just a thing that just kind of like, it just uh, occasionally like some, you just kind of get this phrase that pops into your mind or something that just seems kind of like to encapsulate it. And uh, I don't really, it's hard, I, I can't really verbalize why that title makes sense to me. It just, it was, it just was what it seemed like it should be. It's, it's kind of an abstract thing, I understand that, but... Um, you know, I, I really, it was the, that sort of um, syncopated, kind of mechanized electronic, I mean, the whole nature of electronic music, this kind of like um, repetitive um, mantra, I mean, to, to me it kind of like functions in this kind of like mantra-like uh, fashion, and um, so it was, I was trying to capture something that um, sort of suggested or hinted at the mechanical, repetitive nature of the of the actual composition itself, um, and at the same time um, referenced kind of like the the evolution of the composition um, in a sort of growing um, kind of uh, aesthetic. But um, you know, to be perfectly honest with you, uh, as with any other project, I I, uh, I kind of went ten different directions before I settled on the one that seemed like just the, the most successful or the most succinct. So um, th there were definitely other sort of visual uh, ways of, of interpreting this for me, but um, this was just the one that seemed like the most um, just clicked, you know. Cool. Yeah, so Avi, I guess I can ask you this question too. And what's really interesting about Avi's artwork is that it was uh, hand drawn. It was some. It was definitely a different style of design. Um, you know, Sonny's and Guillermo's were somewhat similar in in approach. I guess the overall idea of it was more of a digital kind of art. Um, but Avi's yours definitely brought a different aesthetic to it. So, with that, how did you choose your title as well, and how did you go about? choosing those three different sun glitter songs um, to create your collage final product? Oh yeah, um, so the title of my um, artwork is Drifted Away. I think that basically tells everything already because when I listen to his songs it's it just pulls you out of yeah, I, it's more like you, you, you are on a bubble and you just listen to his music and you're just somewhere 
Mm. And um, when I listen to these songs, it's, uh, yeah. Um, the first thing that I see is what I just draw. I, I can't really tell, like, why or, uh, yeah, just everything. The color, the shapes, yeah, it, everything is... This is the first thing that I see, and that I just put it onto the paper. Yeah. Do you think that the tracks? This goes in the next question, but do you think um, now the next step of the project that the musicians have now taken your artwork um, and they are in the middle of creating the track that will be released in about a month or so, um, and so we kind of have this back and forth dual process, kind of this music inspires art, inspires music take. Do you think that the songs that you chose will resonate um, with what he will, with what Sung Glitters will create, inspired by your artwork? Because the musicians don't know the songs that you guys chose. So, do you think that his approach will be very similar to the songs that you chose, or do you think he'll kind of go a different route because of the the uniqueness of the project itself? Well, that is a question that I can't answer, and I'm really. Um looking forward to what he's really creating because um, maybe it's something that will be similar but um, maybe not I, I don't know okay how about yeah. Sonny how about you any uh, idea what what teen days might might take from your artwork none whatsoever this is like I certainly like never done anything like this before it's actually really uh, intriguing because I don't have this I never I never met him I have no idea what kind of person he is like couldn't right. tell you so I hope so, he's not cheating uh, been watching this. Yeah. <laughs> um, so Guillermo, I'm gonna ask you this question too, and maybe it'll resonate better with you because Papu <laughs> goes different directions with genres. Do you think he might do something that's more mellow, or do you think it might take a more, um, you know, harder EDM approach? Because your, I mean, definitely your poster has this really strong cultural vibe to it. So he might do something with that as well. What do you think? Um. I don't know what he what he exactly what he would do, but I feel like if it were to sound differently, it would probably just sound darker. Cause like the 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 other like the 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 actual music that I got it from was like definitely not as like it was like the darkest tracks that he could. That's one of the darkest tracks he has. That's mm -hmm. the only way I could possibly say it. it's like it probably might be darker. But then he might see something completely different in it that I can't really like have any control over. He might be like, oh wow, this resonates with me in this other way. Right, right. Um, like I would totally unexpect it. So really, anything goes. It just depends what he really chooses to take out. Not really chooses, but he gets out of it. Really. Cool. Yeah, I mean, I think that's it's it's cool because I, I was kind of expecting this kind of answers with the question. Um, and that's the cool part of doing this, the back and forth kind of inspiration is, you know, you might have you use three songs to be inspired by something, but when it comes to someone else's perspective, it can be completely different. And I think when you do that, especially in ways of crowdsourcing with multiple, multiple people um, and having them, you know, contribute towards a certain kind of installation or what have you, it brings out some really beautiful things. Um, so with that, you know, the last question is, I guess, how important are these kind of collaborations, maybe not just with this project, but with live experiences. I know that um, Guillermo does live visuals uh, with XXYYXX, and um, some of you also may have some background in, in other kind of digital art or, or projection mapping. Um, but how will this interaction between visual art and sonic art meld, and how, will, how necessary is it to have more of a strong visual brand with music, whether it's album releases or live experiences in like the next five or ten years? Uh, Guillermo, we can start with you. Um, well, I guess you could divide it into two things. There's live show and then there's like the actual music. Mm -hmm. When it comes to the live show, I feel as like everything's getting more unified. Like it's, you know, the music's always getting tied with like visuals. Like when you go to shows, it has to be like a full-on experience, especially in electronic music. Like that is just an integral part. Now everyone's like doing some electric on electronic elements. Like you've seen bands like now like having visuals, electronic artists having like live mapping with visuals. It's all. I mean, I think it's just a lot of a bigger future of different things. Like a lot. It just has to be together. And then when it comes to the releases and stuff, yeah, definitely like it's all. It's become having more like a creating a world for like a listener to enter and then like experience it all together, like visually, sonically. 
as opposed to just like, oh, here's some audio, and then you can like get what you want from it, or you might not, you might forget about it. So it's like you need know, to keep people's attentions and like make the experiences have to become like fuller now, I guess. That's, right. that's what it's it looking like. Yeah, it's. I mean, there's. I actually watched this interview with Billy Corgan, the lead, the I guess the lead singer of Smashing Pumpkins, and he talked about how people have to think, musicians have to think of what they're releasing, what they're creating, in this kind of broader uh, bandwidth of what music really entails. That you know, he can. He he said that the Beatles weren't just the music; they were timeless because they were like a love thing. They were like the movie thing. They did. They had all these different things that kind of encapsulated who they were, and that's why they became such a an, an icon, you know. And, and especially now, <clears throat> things are becoming served to us on silver platters, and it's in and out, and it's hard for bands to kind of keep that um, that memorable moment in, in their album or their live experience intact with how fast paced the the community is. And um, it's interesting with you know what you do with XXYYXX. Just a lot of DJs will. It, it's it's different seeing a DJ perform. I I would say it's not as exciting necessarily because you just see him in front of his laptop. You're not really sure what he's doing. Um, and <coughs> when you see a band, it's at least more interactive. You can see that they're creating this and that there's people working together. Um, so I think electronic music generally has much more of a visual attachment to it, and all the musicians in this project are electronic and that was what the cool aspect of it was too um, and also it's like when you listen to uh, Taku, Sun Glitters or Teen Days you know you don't imagine them necessarily in their room making beats on a MIDI you know if you had heard like a rock band you might imagine them playing the guitar or playing the drums you might picture that but with electronic music you don't just see them sitting in their computer you know working on working on songs and editing and all that kind of stuff so they have a really strong visual attachment to it, whether you're seeing them live or just, you know, listening to their music. But, um, Sonny, yeah, I mean, the same question could go to you. I actually interviewed Sonny a few years ago, um, which was crazy to think of that, you know, <laughs> that happened. But uh, you definitely mentioned how, um, you know, the, the visual brand of even an, of album artwork is just as important as what the song is or what the album is. So do you want to kind of go off of that a little more? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I feel like the aesthetics of, uh, you know, rock music in general have a, are, are um, e easily as important as, um, well, easily as uh, influential on people as the music itself. Maybe not as important, but um, I think um, even... You know, you're talking about like, electronic music being sort of like the dominating factor these days, and even even within that uh, paradigm, um, there's you know, it's the it's the art it's artists like Daft Punk, for example, who who really have created an image for themselves that exists beyond the realm of their music, and 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 they're this phenomenal thing. Not only because the mu music is so appealing to people, but because they've got this succinct, condensed idea of what Daft Punk is for most people, and they have this really stylized look and approach to what they're doing. And I think that's the uh, this 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 integral, single most um, um, memorable part of what they're doing is this of of what they've done is create an identity for themselves and i think that that, that um is inseparable from having a, a a real like meaningful career uh making music or being any kind of um contributing to the culture at all i think uh if you are doing it um you know uh, if you're just like laboring uh in obscurity somewhere you might be creating great art but nobody Will experience it like you, it needs to be married to something tangible and and uh, to, to act as a vehicle for it to get into people's uh, just to get people's attention. And so yeah, I think I think the aesthetic end of things is 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 vastly important. And I think um, you know now we're starting to see like holograms and this kind of thing happening. I mean it's 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 at a cheesy point right now. It's this gimmicky. Um, silly, like, resurrecting dead people thing. But I think within a few years, we're going to see something really exciting happening with that, where, um, 
you know, live shows aren't so much about projections necessarily and screens, but they're kind of a more of a three-dimensional, um, you know, potentially like surrounding the audience or encompassing the audience kind of thing. I mean, that's sort of what I've been anticipating for a while. Um, as far as concerts and stuff goes, so or even like DVDs, with a, you know, a home theater where it's kind of like a, a, a you know, a three D kind of like holographic projector, so you can actually watch this three D performance in your living room, um, being beamed from your TV as opposed to just watching it on this flat screen. So I think that's just one example of, of like how uh, multi dimensional it's getting. Cool, Avi, how about do you have a uh, any kind of uh, Prediction on on how these two kind of uh, artistic expressions will meld into into one, uh, whether it's live experiences or just uh, album releases. Oh yeah, I think it's just totally important because I personally don't do uh, visuals yet, because but um, I was just digging into um, those live projecting and ma mapping videos, and I just when I see these is like. It's just totally wowing you when when you see, uh, yeah, it, when they combine music with these videos that just they're just melting. And um, I think it's it's totally important. It, I totally agree with you what you said before. When people those DJs having those shows and just look at them and you don't know what they're doing, and it's it's just nicer to see visuals that. Um, is being prepared for their show, and it's just nicer to look at. It's right. more capturing. Yeah. So I mean, I think overall, you know, the the next cool thing with this project is that it's that perspective is now taken um, to the musician's viewpoint. Now, for them to kind of um, be in an uncomfortable realm and have to kind of focus. And channel their their artistic expressions inspired by one certain thing that I don't think a lot of musicians are really used to. Um, they kind of just do what they do, are inspired by where they've been, the people they've met, and certain kind of aesthetics. But you know, to kind of give them something and say, analyze this visual art, um, break it down as if you were a visual artist, <clears throat> and kind of be able to translate their things into your instrumentation of the track you're going to make, which is really interesting. And, and it, like I said, it takes on that different perspective of this mesh between visual and audio experiences. So it's really cool looking forward to the second uh, portion of the, the campaign where we'll have Taku Teen Days and Sun Glitters uh, be interviewed. Um, so, yeah, I want to thank you guys for doing this. Um, really, really cool. And for all the people who are watching, to keep tuned in, we have the posters um, that will be ready or purchased in about a month. The track releases. You can check them out over at the Brio Life website um, or over at the store to pre order the Brio Life uh, big cartel com, And then stay tuned for um, a date on the actual live experience where we have these three visual artists here with us and the musicians come together to perform and we'll have Google Hangouts be able to capture this for online viewers as well. So again, thank you guys um, for doing the interview. We'll keep in touch very soon and um, yeah, thanks thank again. You. Cool. Thank you.